We've returned from our trip up to Bromont in Quebec in Canada and Jimmy and Bellamy had a really excellent weekend. So now I'm officially qualified for Rolex, which is huge. It's been like God, a lifelong dream of mine my entire life. I've just got to keep him ticking along now and keep him sound and happy and get, get to April with a horse that's ready to go. In the meantime, Bellamy is turned out and on extended holiday. He's out for about a month. It's well deserved. He was so great the whole week and I hope he really enjoys it. So my dad always says, to declare victory, Rolex, heck yeah. In exciting news, Cold Harbour is uh, back in work now. So after going up to Bromont, not being able to compete him there, uh, we came back and learned that the test results for his muscle biopsy came back negative for any other uh, conditions, which was great news. And now uh, we're back into slow work. Mary stopped by today to kind of go over some more results with me in person. We're testing his blood as we go to make sure that the levels are normal and so far they've been perfectly within a normal range. So we're going back into a, a good working routine and preparing him for a three star in August, which is really exciting. Bo feels a little bit rusty after a couple of weeks of holiday, but nothing that won't come back to him after a couple of weeks more work. After watching our vet, Dr. Mary Griffin, take a Cold Harbor steak out of his butt a couple of weeks ago, I'm really happy to see that the stitches and the scar is healing up really nicely. Stitches are about ready to come out. Yeah. Tomorrow, right? Yeah. We've got a couple of new thoroughbreds that have come into the barn uh, that prospects to become event horses. Is that trying to kick you? So first impressions um, of these two, they're actually polar opposite. Breeze, the gelding that Dom rides, is super sweet and is kind of learning the ropes. Um, he looks like he's been ridden before, but no real formal education. So he's just going to keep doing the flat work and jump a little bit, and he'll, he'll come along. And Ella, or better known as Ginny Weasley, which I picked out, uh, she is a super cool horse. She's just a little bit further behind, I think, than Breeze. Um, a friend of mine from Texas started her and found her, and uh, she still struggles a little bit with the contact and steering and that sort of thing, but um, she shows a lot of promise, and I think she's gonna be great. She doesn't buck me off. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, and this kid's is what not. And both of them look like they're pretty talented and we're excited to have some young horses around because it keeps things interesting. And both these horses are fun to work with. Both of these horses are off the track thoroughbreds and so our main priority right now is just to kind of get them in the swing of things, get them moving, 
they still kind of move a little bit like racehorses and so we're just trying to loosen them up, get them forward, get them happy about their jobs and then over the coming weeks we'll start introducing the jumping and turn them into event horses. Sister Nikki. Mm -hmm. She's pregnant, gonna have a baby in one month. Yeah. You could babysit we for could her. Babysit for her. How are your sisters and your babies? Good. My other sisters are gonna pop, pop soon at the too. same time. Can't wait. But we she won't, won't she won't find out if it's a boy or girl, which is my sister won't either. She won't do it. She doesn't have names yet either. Oh, I don't know if she has names, but like she okay, so she has girl clothes, and the majority of the babies in my family are girls. That's how it was like, with my family on. too. And then Nikki had Gabe. Yeah. And then but all well, he, she actually made him wear Conley's clothes. <laughs> Here you go. Remember that picture of him in the ski clothes, yeah, and they're yeah. all Conley's girl clothes. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't know the difference. I could not find out though. Like, no way. No way. I kind of like want to have. Babies. Tom would kill me. Yeah. This second. He'd say no for sure. <laughs> I want to have twins. Don't wish that you want anyone. No I do way. want twins. I actually do, in fact, really want twins. Tom said I have to wait for like, no, we thought we would wait five more years. That seems like so long. You're going to be so old. You know, your kids I'll are 20 like and they're going to be like 60. <laughs> no. Just do it. Okay, how about you run around Rolex first then? And then I give you permission. One Rolex and then I can have my twins? Yeah. Dom's gonna have an absolute hernia when he watches this episode. I think Dom's gonna be a good dad. I think so. I mean, he does love veggie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think veggie will have a hard time with it. I think veggie will have a really hard time. Oh, veg. What veggie? You wanna. You want little siblings? Little. Some things. He's like, as long as I can rule the house. He's like, can I shrilly bark in their faces? <laughs> Possibly nose punch. Oh, nose punch the heck out of those kids. Okay, should we get the truck and go yeah. start loading some poles? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The idea of this game that we're doing now is basically to sort of replicate some of the pressure that you feel when you're at a show. And it's kind of a lighthearted, fun way to do it. Although we are trying to put in um, some of the things we're training into practice. Um, so I'm not so much teaching the girls today, I'm more kind of keeping an eye on and making sure that they're using those skills the right way. The ideas of the game or the rules of the game are to uh, whoever does kind of the tidiest, cleanest round, and we score each other um, from one to ten. I mean, it's not it's not really rocket science. If it looks good and it flows well, you get a high score. If you make a mistake and it looks terrible, you get a low score. And it's just kind of a fun way of, of playing around with that idea of pressure. So, the game. I actually lost the last time we played the game, and so I was pretty okay with not having to be a participant in the game and just getting to judge, which is perfect for me. We all get a chance to warm up, and then there's three rounds, and it starts simple and it gets a little bit harder. And then as you do the little rounds, uh, the other two people, we actually the other three people, Jimmy will do it too, give the person that goes a score out of 10. So like not just for little things like accuracy, getting the right leads, like good position, good distances, whatever. And it can, it's just sort of an overall score, like it's not a big deal. If you knock down a rail, you have to get off and pick it up yourself. And 
the person that lose, the person at the end of three rounds with the lowest score has to put the jumps away. The person with the highest score gets a warm fuzzy. The last time we played this game, Stephanie actually beat me in a tiebreaker. So I'm kind of hunting for her a little bit. I want to take her down. So, and then in the warm up, we get, uh, you'll get five jumps. You get two cross rails and three verticals. And it's going to be that one right there. So we're just trying to basically mimic what it's like. And we did two last time. You can do whatever you want for your warm up. Like you warm up yourself kind of, right? Yeah. yeah, but you only get five. But you get five yeah. jumps. So you can jump them however way you want. Trot, canter, left, right, tight circle, straight line, and then... Then that's it. it. So it's sort of mimicking a show, basically. And I'm not teaching you today. You're on your own. Okay? We'll give him a bit of a trot around here. and everything in your arsenal. Yeah. She may not really have jumped indoors before, so just make sure you keep a really good canter. All right, one down. See cold look about her too. She's like a... You, you, you would just... You don't know, and then she looks like she's just going to take you down. Oh, man. Once I saw just how confined the space was and the course was quite tight, I started realizing Shoshana probably had a real distinct advantage because her horse is kind of more like a Maserati compared to us was basically driving around garbage trucks. So I thought she had a real advantage. Y'all are screwed. <laughs> oh boy. We're gonna do our sunshine is number one across the arena and then go round the vertical and come and do our two stride through here. So brown to the purple. Okay. It's a yard short in two, so you guys should get it, no worries. Then a right hand turn back over the oxa and going towards there and then left around and then finish with our six or seven stride up here, okay? So the, the last rule is, is that your round starts as soon as you pick up the canter. That's when you start judging. All right, ready? A new rule that we added today was if you go off course or you miss a jump, uh, it's automatic zeros across the board. And this isn't gonna be so much a problem for me, but for Stephanie, who basically needs a GPS to get around a show jumping course, this could be a bit of a challenge. My horse is a little squirrely in the warm up, but I was pretty sure I had them beat. <laughs> well, sorry, I'm trying to control the stuff. Oh, you got lost. Just finish your course at least. Finish your course. Three zeros. So, in typical Struggle City form, I go off course at the second fence. Steph. Oh, Steph, I mean, I told her. I told her not to get lost. And sure enough. She goes off course, triple zeros. Maybe she was just really wanting to move those jumps again for the 45th time. I think right. that's, sorry, I think, Steph. sorry Steph. Story of my life. <sighs> Poor Steph. But I think it's good to get, because if you do go off course in the ring, you'll get eliminated. Yep. So, oh, I got frazzled. And then you yeah, got frazzled and then stop re remembering where you're going. Well, I guess the only good thing is at least she did it here and didn't throw away a $150 entry fee at a show. All right, Shoshana. It looks like it's gonna be a, uh, unless one of us screws up, it looks like it's gonna be a showdown. Well, I hope it goes pretty well today. Oh boy. Oh, no. Right at the last, heartbreak. It's all right. Regroup, Yeah, yeah, jump, jump that one again. Quick. It's not related, so you can. All right, good. You're a bit weak to the cant to the oxa, so you got a bit there, like a bit sticky off the ground. So I take a mark off for that. I take one mark off for the uh, you were a little bit crooked in there, which probably didn't help with your run out. And then obviously a mark with the run out. So I'll give you, so I actually give you a seven. It was pretty good. Well, I was pretty happy with how the first round went. So Dom might have to worry a little bit because she's doing pretty well. I was actually very pleased to see how Shoshana went through this because uh, she's pretty green and the horse hasn't done a lot. And she actually rode pretty well today. She was doing quite a good job. 
So of course Shoshana's been here for three seconds and has a really cute horse that just goes wherever she points her. And I'm over here with this yip ya cruising around the ring like I don't know what I'm doing. Steph needs two perfect rounds to even get second. She needs to get her together. Nine, three nines. Oh, 27, we're too soft on her. 27. So seven, seven is 14 plus six. 20. It's all right, that's so respectable. All right, Jimmy, let's jack it up. One hole all around. The next course, a little bit of a step up in difficulty. By the end, of, by the end of the third round, it'll be a little bigger than novice, an inch bigger than novice. Seven point five. Um, beginning I thought was good, and then. You came around the turn good to this one, but you kind of let her drift over the vertical, and then you fixed it, but then instead of getting here knowing that you needed to really push for the two, you kind of just let her keep going, and she got two and chip. Um, and then the oxer, I thought you rode much, much better than last time. Then you almost forgot to turn there. So that's another point. And then you had a little bit of a funny distance at the last one. So that's your half point. Seven so. and a half. Seven and a half. I think. I think that's all fair points. I think the good thing was was that you learned from the first round and you rode better to the ox at that time. But I definitely agree with her. I think you're a bit passive in the two stride. It doesn't matter that you got five, but that it was always going to be two. And I think you were half thought it might be three, which, and then you almost overrode because she ran out last time. You almost overrode, and then you sort of ran her past her distance there. I'll give it a seven. But I, what I like the most, actually I'll give it a 7.5. I'll give you half a mark because you rode better to the Oxa. You learned something from the first round. Shramo, you've got a 27 and a 24. Shosho's -sho got a 20 and a 23. I'm pulling in strong with a 19.5. Step is pulling strong yeah, with a 19.5. Okay. What's the damage? Nine. Nine? Just because he broke into the trot. Yep. Here. Other than that, I thought it was good. Two nines. Yes! <laughs> Finally! This round sealed the deal for us, and Spencer and I are going to take home the gold medal. All right, Jimmy, tally the scores 69 out of a possible 80. That percentage has gone up a little bit from last week. Or last time. So I got Spencer, you hear that? We got the gold medal. Shoshana's a 56. 56 out of a possible 80. Shoshana definitely gets the most improved award because we've really only been training this horse for a couple weeks and uh, I was really happy with how they went today. I definitely agree with, with Dom. Um, Shoshana's only been here a really short time and she's showing a ton of improvement quite quickly. I think I learned a lot from that game and next time I'm gonna beat everyone. Stephanie bringing up the well, she did get I was the winner she last got triple time. she got triple zeros. So it came as no shock that I was in last place when it all ended. Thirty three, but if you but if you subtract that's thirty three out of fifty because so that's not so bad. The moral the moral to the story is gang is that we need to well apart from that but it's also too like the reason we do all this stuff at home training and stuff like that the adjusting and all these exercises so we can go into a round and be be effective. And I think it's, we all suffer from it. I mean, that's why, I mean, this game's kind of light harder, but at the end of the day, it's actually a lot, a lot more stressful and there's a lot more jumps and stuff at the show, so it's good to practice. All right, until next time. You gotta be like me, guys. You gotta have an epic miss at the first jump and then have a clear round after. Are you doing a victory gallop right now? Yeah. 
And Dom, of course, decides to be a friggin' jack wagon and do a victory lap. You've got to have a victory lap. I mean, honestly, how old are we? <sighs> yeah, he was a good boy. It's all about the horse. Just carried me around. And I won the right to basically not have to do any work, which is exactly the way I like it. Stephanie, you don't have to move the jumps out straight away, but before my lesson this afternoon would be great. <laughs> she must be totally into manual labor. Hey, Shrammy. Yeah? Did you see the new stuff that we got from all those sponsors? Did it come? Yeah, it came while you were gone over the weekend. We got the flexible fit stuff, the professional choice, some safeguard. What's the, um, what are the, uh, rest clothes look like? They're over there. We put a bunch of it away. I don't know if you want to take a couple of them off. There's brown ones. Oh, wow, and these are ones. nice. And then they all have the connecting, the, the rings on them. Because I was away teaching a clinic over the weekend, I wasn't here when we received some packages from a couple of new sponsors. And the sponsors thing is uh, really exciting. It's a great way for businesses to work together. And Jimmy and I are now reaching a stage of our career where we um, are competing enough and have enough of a, a visibility that businesses like to kind of support us. They've got fuzzies. Oh, so you can just like everything. change them. That's awesome. Yeah, and for the nose They're bands, really too. soft. As you know, supplies, equipment is really expensive and when we're running a business, anything that helps us uh, get what we need without us having to fork out cash is a huge help. So these particular sponsors, Flexible Fit, which is an Australian bridal company, and Professionals Choice, which is a well-known American um, boot and everything company, uh, the stuff that they can kind of help us out with is getting us products that we use every day and then we don't have to go and spend it. And it's a huge uh, pressure lifted off us for like our monthly expenses. I mean, a lot of people dream about becoming a rider and getting sponsors and stuff and it is really a privilege, but at the same time it's a responsibility. Uh, we understand that this isn't just a one-way road where we just get a bunch of free stuff. Uh, we have to do our part in helping them promote their business as well and we take that very seriously. So um, it is great to have sponsors come on board and it's great developing a relationship where we can both benefit. I'm really excited to see all this gear and it totally exceeded my expectations. We're really lucky to have these new sponsors on board. And also too for Jimmy and I, it's exciting to see many years of hard work starting to pay off and we're getting one step closer to fulfilling our goals.